We're starting to work on our protrusive contacts now, and you can see I've got a real jump there. Make sure that the paper on both sides crosses in the anterior region so you can see where your anterior contacts are. In this particular case, I've got a really heavy interference. You can actually see the denture, the back of the denture here, jumps off of the cast as we're moving. As we open that up, I can already see where the problem is. It's the distal incline of the maxillary canine. It's very heavy contact against the mandibular premolar. I'm going to have to lighten that up quite a bit and I'll probably remove a little bit of that mandibular buccal cusp because remember we don't want those buccal cusps touching. Overall my contacts are not so bad in protrusion. You can see over on this side here I'm picking up all sorts of little contacts but this one over here is by far the heaviest. It's the darkest, it's the longest, it's the widest and the brightest. Okay so I'm going to lighten that up. I don't want that cingulum that uh, canine contact being so heavy that it's excluding all the other teeth. I'm also going to lighten this one over here and any of these that look particularly heavy I'm just going to dust them off where they look the heaviest so that we get things smoothed out pretty well. In the maxilla I've got to get rid of that heavy canine contact so I'm going to adjust that again just from the lingual surface there, again making sure that I don't do too much to the shape of the maxillary canine. I want to make sure that still looks like a nice looking tooth, but I want to make sure that that's not hitting anything on my buccal contacts here. I can lighten those up. You can see my anterior contacts are coming along nicely. Probably in protrusion I'm hitting a little bit heavier on this opposite canine there as well. So I'll look, take a look on that corresponding premolar. And on the buckle, I'm going to loosen that up too. All of those heavy contacts, those are what cause the jumps and the bumps when you go on excursions. Let's put those together, slide them back, and see if things are getting any smoother. There's still a little bit of a catch, but it's not jumping as much. I've marked things again, and I'm still getting a really heavy premolar contact, but also I can take a look back here on the mandibular second molar, and that's a heavy protrusive contact as well. I'm going to lighten that one up and I'm going to lighten quite a bit up on my mandibular first premolar. On the opposite side things are looking a little bit better. I might again be heavy on the first premolar here. That buccal contact I don't want. Might be a little bit heavy back here. Cusp is coming into this area here. It's going out and it's a little bit heavy. We'll smooth that off. And some of these areas that are dots would sort of smooth off so they can become lines. In the maxilla, I'll be watching those canines again because they're heavy on the premolars. Sometimes you'll actually have to move the, the canine tooth out a little bit more buckle or twist the distal surface a little bit to give a bit more room for the mandibular first premolar or you may actually have to move the first premolar in in the mandible a little bit so it's not hitting quite as heavy. My first premolar up here is also heavy. I'm going to shallow the incline out on that. My cusp used to be at this angle and all I do is I shallow it out like that so that those cusps don't hit quite so quickly when we move into excursion. When I'm adjusting the canines, I'll always go back and sort of smooth things off and round the tips so I don't end up with a sharp edge. If we do, that'll be a real catch in the occlusion as we go into excursions. In protrusion, you don't really have a working and a balancing side. Both sides are translating straight forward, so actually you're looking at working contacts on both sides. Here you can see that things have smoothed up quite a bit. Still got a little bit of catch here on the first premolar. Let's take a look at the contacts that we see. These are nice lines. These are good lines. These are protrusive contacts starting with a cusp here, moving out the back. Could establish more over here. This is by far the heaviest contact. This one's heavy again and possibly over here. I'll lighten those things up. You can notice I'm getting those good anterior contacts. I'm just about done. I'm very close to having finished my balanced occlusion here. You can see I've got a nice smooth excursion in, in lateral excursions and also in protrusion. If I take a look at my contacts, you can see I've got my anterior contacts. I've got working uh, contacts on both sides that are fairly even. I still have my centric stops marked in black. That's looking pretty good. In the maxilla, you can also see 
I've got those anterior grazing contacts, still have my centric stops, things are looking good. You might want to take a look at your um, teeth and see if there's any areas where you can fix things up a little bit. I might see over here, if I put my hand behind, I've got a lateral inside that is not quite touching. I might move that lower one up just a tiny bit to catch uh, some contact there. That will help my patient in size a little bit more. I'll actually heat that up and move that up. But otherwise, my excursions are nice and smooth and I've got my centric stops preserved and I've got working and balancing contacts in lateral excursions and nice, even, smooth contacts in protrusion. That's what you want to see when you're finished adjusting.